right, I just showed you a short clip of the things uh, I like to do. Welcome to our class. Please be sure that you are really enrolled to this class or else you will not get any grades if you are not really enrolled to this class. In this class session, we will actually discuss class policies and lecture topics. But before we go to that, let me introduce to you myself. I am Pearl Aphrodite B. Karnise. I am currently assistant professor too. I actually took um, the same program like yours. I graduated with Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science last 2011. Before, our program is actually called BENS, that's B-E-N-S. I think somewhere 2016 or maybe 2017, it's already called as B-S-E-S or the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science program which is the program that you are also enrolled. I'm not bragging, but I was actually a consistent dean's lister. I hope you will be too. Right after college, I decided that I really want to do graduate school, in which I enrolled myself with the Master of Science in Soil Science and my minor in Tropical Ecology. I studied my master's in Visayas State University. I am actually a DOST ASTHRDP scholar. DOST ASTHRDP stands for Department of Science and Technology. The ASTHRDP stands for the Accelerated Science and Technology Human Resource Development Program. It's actually a scholarship for graduate students. There are only few universities in the whole Philippines that is accredited with the DOST ASTHRDP. So if you are interested for graduate school, you can actually Google for the requirements of that scholarship. Scholarship ranges from environmental science, agriculture, botany, a lot of programs. Actually, there's a lot of programs that they're offering. And which also, of course, uh, let me remind you, if you really want to do graduate school, one of your tickets is for you to have good grades. So start us now, have good grades. Boom. So uh, right after <laughs> right after master's, I applied to our university, EVSU main campus. I actually started as a substitute instructor. I got lucky again. And after a few weeks, I think, or a few months, they offered me a regular job. So I was or the irregular faculty. Somewhere 2015, actually somewhere 2014, I wrote a letter saying that I really want to do my PhD as early as that time. Of course, um, they approve, in which uh, I'm so thankful they approve to it right away. Uh, something happened in between in which I started my PhD early 2015. I went to the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. I took Doctor of Philosophy in Environmental Science. I just graduated last December 2019, but actually I am part of the batch 2020. At the same time, I got very lucky again because during those times, I am actually a CHED Faculty Development Program 2 scholar. So that scholarship is actually offered to faculty members and staff. But today, Faculty Development Program 2 or Faculty Development Program scholarship is not offered anymore. Transformed into K-12 scholarships. The K-12 scholarships does not only offer scholarships in the Philippines, but they also offer scholarship outside the country. So, you know, in the future, you may want to apply for that. You may want to do your master's or your PhD outside the country. So that would be really great. And above all, you know, please don't forget to go home and help our country. Somewhere in 2017, I got very, very lucky again. I applied for a Fulbright scholarship and I got Lucky, as I said, I landed into one in which I went to Florida State University from 2017 to 2018. I actually went there as a full Fulbright scholar, as a PhD visiting researcher. I did all of my dissertation experiments and analysis in the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory. So this laboratory is actually one of a kind. You can actually Google them. When I was there, I was actually under the Department of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Science of the Florida State University. So I'd like to travel in which uh, it's been, you know, like everybody else, it's been hard for us because of what is happening because of the pandemic. But, you know, for the greater good, we have to stay at our homes and, you know, enjoy it and be comfortable with it. That's me. It's basically me. My office or consultation hours is usually one hour before and one hour after the class. So my office is actually in the science building, third floor. I hope one day, if everything gets better, you will be able to walk the stairs to the third floor of the science building and visit our office. Hey, I know. One day I know, for sure. However, since there is no face-to-face -face classes for the whole semester, all you have to do to set an appointment 
is email me. As you all know, this is my email address. My email address is pearl.carnice.wrong. It's pearl.carnice at evsu.edu.ph. All right, this is Environmental Monitoring and Modeling 2 or EM400. This course introduces students to the art and science of modeling environmental systems. Students will learn the basic steps of modeling. For example, problem definition, model development, evaluation, and of course, the application part. Models will typically involve describing natural and social systems with mathematical approximations of their behavior. Lectures will help students learn how to translate world problems into model components. Labs will provide students with hands-on experience in the design and construction of working models using computerized spreadsheets or Microsoft Excel. This course also explores how GIS and related technologies, global positioning systems, remote sensing, and and others can be used to promote and support the construction and simulation of dynamic models of human and environmental systems. Applications will be drawn from a range of environmental issues including climate change, air and water pollution, biodiversity, and natural resource management. The course is intended to incorporate the knowledge of environmental ethics and laws and the management of the natural resources. To that, we have few learning outcomes. First learning outcome is to perform advanced quantitative data analysis using Microsoft Excel, including simple and complex functions, array functions, data filtering, application of lookup tables, importing and exporting data from or to specified file formats, and of course, illustrate complex data sets in charts and tables. Of course, we have to perform statistical analysis using Microsoft Excel. Statistical analysis will include regression analysis, trend analysis, frequency distribution, which is very easy, and of course, the correlation analysis, measures of central tendency and variability, and of course, the hypothesis testing. Third learning outcome is to demonstrate the ability to design experiments and interpret numerical and graphical data. Fourth learning outcome is to describe the fundamental building blocks like data sources, data models, special analysis methods, programming tools, and others used in geographic information technologies and spatial models. The fifth learning outcome, which is the last learning outcome, is to discuss how dynamic spatial models have been implemented to both simulate the functioning of human and environmental systems and understand their behavior under altered conditions. To that learning outcomes, this will be our learning topics. So let's focus first on the lecture topics. So of course, on week one, we have to discuss the class overview in which we will discuss the mission vision of the university, College of Arts and Sciences vision and mission, university and the College of Arts and Sciences policies, and of course, the course syllabus. So unit two, we will discuss now the introduction to modeling. We will discuss the introduction and the steps in model development. Next is we will discuss um, statistical models. So for example, we will review basic statistics like t-test, f-test, analysis of variance. And then on week four, we will go on in discussing some other statistical models like correlation and regression analysis, multivariate ANOVA. We will also discuss reconciling models of the data because there are cases that the model that you are using does not fit the data that you have. So you have to reconcile that for you to have a better result. And of course, you will also be evaluating statistical models. It really fits your data or not. Or if your statistical tool is appropriate to your data or to your experiment. And then uh, we will have now the midterm exam. On week 8, we will, we will go now to environmental models. We will discuss introduction to simulation models, and then we will discuss tax and flows. We will discuss population growth models, how these models through time decreases its population. And then we will discuss spatial simulation with GIS. And then we will discuss stochastic models, 
Monte Carlo simulations and sensitivity analysis. Of course, introduction to optimization models. We will also discuss feedback mechanisms and casual loop diagrams and the predator prey model. And then we will have a wrap up week. Again, this is a lot of time for your asymmetric requirements. And we will now have the final exam that is for the lecture. Let's go now to the laboratory topics. So for week one, you will be working in Microsoft Excel. I will give you a link. I will give you a link in which you will find their training courses for beginners, intermediate users, and advanced users. So you will actually learn a lot of things with this training course. This is actually a training course by the Microsoft Excel. Also, I would like to remind everybody that as early as now, you have to install QGIS, QGIS 3.8 Zanzibar in your laptop. That's lab 1 and 2. It's the Microsoft Excel. For lab 3, we will have the environmental statistics which focuses on regression analysis, trend analysis, and correlation analysis. And then on week 3, we will continue with the lab 3. On week Four, we will now have the lab 4, which is hypothesis testing and comparing populations. And it will continue on week 5. And then on week 6, we will have the midterm exam for the laboratory. So for lab 5, we will now have the spatial modeling, which is we will be using now the QGIS. We will create 6 maps using the QGIS, which is under the spatial. And then on lab 6, we will focus on the feedback mechanisms and casual loop diagrams. We will be using the Stella software. And on lab 7, we will still be using the Stella software with the application of the predator prey model. And then week 17 is at the time for possible and submitted requirements. And of course, the week 18 which is the final exam. So we have requirements. Usually, of course, you have to pass the midterm and the finals of both lecture and lab. And then we will have one paper discussion on the lecture. You have to submit all laboratory exercises. So if you have questions, Google link will be given to you for your questions. Okay, let's go now to the grading system. For the grading system, 50% for the lecture and then 50% for the laboratory. Let's go first to the lecture. Terms is 50% and finals is 50%. So overall, major exams is 30%. Paper discussion is 10%. Quizzes is 5%. And the recitation is 5%. That equates to 50%. Let's go now to the laboratory. As you can see, we have lab 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Lab 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 7 is only 4%. Lab 5 is 15%. The reason for that is lab 5 is the spatial modeling in which we will be using the QGIS. As I said earlier, we will have at least 5 or 6 maps that we need to create for us to apply special modeling. That's why it, it has more points compared to other laboratory exercises. Lab 6 is 5% because it focuses on the Stella modeling. And of course, midterms and finals are only 5% both. So midterms or major exams is only 10% with the laboratory. The reason for that is with the laboratory part, outputs are really needed with the laboratory. With the lectures, it's more of the lecture part, so it focuses more on the major exams. Okay, if we will transpose that to point system, it will be overall is equivalent to 500 points. For you to pass, you have to accumulate 375 points. The total of that is 100%, and as we all know, the passing is 75%. 75% passing rate is actually according to the EVSU student handbook. If you want to have a copy of that, all you have to do is go to apps.evsu.edu, scroll down, click downloads, I think, and then you will see EVSU Student Handbook. Or maybe to make it easy, all you have to do is Google it, EVSU Student Handbook, and definitely you will find it. Please note that incentive points will be added along the way. Watch out for it. Okay. So this is the grading system. This is actually based, again, on the EVSU student handbook. You can check it yourself. Flat 1 is 495 to 500. So that's the upper limit to lower limit. For the 3.0, 375 to 380 points. For the attendance, attendance will be checked. 
there will be sitting arrangement. Please be comfortable with your seats. But this is not really applicable in our remote class. This is applicable to the face-to-face class. However, now that we are doing remote classes, it's much easier to check with your attendance. I will explain this to you further as we go to our learning management system. Of course, um, student who incur three and excuse absences will be reported to SASU for disciplinary measures. This might not be really applicable to us right now. But in a face-to-face, I'm just giving you a heads up. Three and excuse absences is actually or could be advice to subject dropping. So absences will only be considered excuse if an excuse letter from a guardian, landlord, dorm, advisor, parent, teacher, or medical certificate with dates is presented in connection to illness, accident, death of an immediate family, maximum one week, God forbid, travel that is approved by the dean of students. As I mentioned earlier, we will be using a learning management system. We will be using Moodle as the official learning management system of EVSU. Honesty is the best policy. So everyone is expected to be honest. A student caught cheating will be given a grade of zero for the quiz, exam, or problem set where he or she is caught. Please take note that when you do your paper discussion, it will be subjected to similarity index or plagiarism checker. Usually, 5% duplication percentage is already considered as a plagiarized paper. Since this is, uh, let us say, college level, not really for publication level, maybe we can increase that to 10% or 15%. But let me warn you that definitely if your similarity index or your duplication index is so high, definitely you will get zero for that paper. If you have questions, I will be uh, giving a Google form link. Thank you for listening and viewing the lecture video. I will see you on our next class.